Zoom. The tools are ready. Zoom. The components are ready and I am ready too. Welcome to the studio. Uh, guys, just before I start to assemble all these parts, I just want to give you some advice, actually lots of advice about finding and purchasing a trail bike. Not only a new bike, I'm not going to be talking about new trends only, but uh, my goal for the, for the new year is to just talk as shortly as, as possible. So first I'm going to answer those questions from the title, which is three mistakes in searching for or buying, purchasing a trail bike. And then I'm going to go through all the components of, on the bike uh, so that you will know which parts actually work on the trail uh, tracks and which are not really necessary. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to be talking just about what you need to hear. Okay, Danny? Ready. Mistake number one following the trends and the trend number one will be 29er wheels okay these are great wheels i'm, I'm not complaining about 29ers 29ers uh, they roll beautifully they are versatile but 27.5 which is kind of an older trend is still great if you are buying kind of old bike it's gonna and it's gonna have 26 inch wheels you are still going to have tons of fun if the geometry is right it's not too close to the XC because the trail bikes went like from XC to trails now XC bikes are coming back to trails so you, you don't want to have um, too aggressive cross-country geometry it's gonna be trail geometry even on the 26 inch wheels will be fine and believe me in some years maybe next year you're gonna be replacing your 29er super duper trail bikes for the mulet um, wheels which is 29er at the front 27.5 at the rear which marketing is already pushing on the e-bike full suspension full suspension e-bikes so 29ers fine if you if you have lower budget for maybe some used 27.5 inch wheels that's great and my my opinion 27.5 inch wheels will be the sweet spot because these bikes will have uh, the right the newer geometry 26 will be all right but i would rather try to find at least 27.5 and remember if you are on the budget which means you are purchasing kind of a low range components it's gonna be quite heavy 27.5 inch wheels will be lighter fork will be lighter the frame will be lighter and the bike might be easier to maneuver through some really uh, like tight uh, corners so just bear that in mind 29ers are not necessarily the best ones these are great but 27.5 is great too mistake number two the more travel the better not necessarily we have here 140 the rear this is 2020 bike 150 at the front i wouldn't go any any more than that 120 by 120 on, on or 130 at the front would be amazing 140 150 will be for maybe even some more advanced trail riding but don't go enduro two reasons number one uh, it will be difficult for you to set up the suspension and number two uh, you might not actually know how to use that much of a travel and 140 150 is lots of travel it will when you are learning to jump and land uh, 140 150 will will really allow you to go to the extremes but 120 130 is also great i would maybe go towards uh, more uh, travel like on this bike if you are on the heavier side uh, in terms of your, your your body weight because yeah more travel uh, will just will be easier for you to use the whole travel but no no not uh, to bottom out okay but you don't have to search for uh, for as much travel as as possible 120 120 or 120 130 is still great mistake number three carbon 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 because you want to have 20 or under 20, uh, 12 or under 12 kilograms bike which will be very expensive alloy is great alloy is great remember that the difference between let's say 2500 dollars alloy bike 
and 9,000 uh, dollars carbon bike will be maybe three and a half kilograms and there is so much uh, difference in, in, in the body weight of different riders and I've never heard riders who, uh, who are heavier telling that they have less fun. Of course the, the weight of the bike is a little bit different game than the, uh, of the, than the body weight but believe me three four kilograms doesn't matter this is trail riding you're not gonna be going for KOMs uh, on the uphills so don't just go for carbon alloy is great okay so this is uh, this is for those who are interested in the title only now I'm gonna go through all the components giving you some uh, advices but we'll just let the little one come home come come she's afraid of the inner tube come 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 <laughs> yeah hasn't seen the inner tube and it looks like a snake all right so uh, let's just go back to the wheels if you're buying older type trail bike um, at least through axles uh, yes I would say skip the quick releases go for the through axles they do make the, the whole chassis uh, stiffer um, and you can you can really push the, the bike to the limit so this is important through axles number two it would be great if your rims were tubeless ready this bike doesn't have tubeless ready rims and if you are buying a budget new and now trendy 2020 2021 bike it will probably come with non tubeless ready rims but most of the non tubeless ready rims you'll be able to uh, convert to a tubeless system I'm putting electrical tape here and it works beautifully but maybe if you are buying some some older bike you can search on the forums on the internet asking people hey will these seal nicely with the tubeless ready tires most of the rims will some will not so just bear that in mind um, from my experience most of the riders are using too high of a pressure air pressure even with the inner tubes I would go lower but with the tubeless system you can really go low and see how much more uh, grip you have uh, how, how much more comfortable uh, of a ride uh, you have so through axles if possible tubeless ready if not tubeless ready would be nice if the bead of the tire would fit nicely to the wall of the rim so that it will seal uh, I, th I think these will okay and then since we are on the wheels the tires I've got the Nobinik here from Schwalbe and the Hans Dampf my favorite ones for the trail riding are the Minions for from uh, Maxis but these are also great in terms of the width we've got here 2.35 so 2.35 2.4 will be great some riders on the XC bikes now are, are putting the 2.4 tires uh, I'm riding 225 and I feel that's I don't want to have more but on the trail bike it's great and this one as you can see is tubeless ready remember that uh, very often you'll be able to match non tubeless ready rim with non tubeless ready uh, tire and it will still work maybe it will lose a little bit of um, uh, of uh, the sealant over time but you can just put it into the tire again and will be fine but tubeless ready is great tubeless ready will be heavier if you are the weight winning freak okay we've got the wheels we've got the tires let's go for the suspension this is the RockShox sector 150 millimeters of travel you don't have to have super duper adjustments this is the sector you've got the rebound here and you've got the compression here and some will allow you to um, adjust the compression till complete lock but you don't need it uh, I'm an XC rider so I love uh, uh, lockouts on my uh, suspensions but for the trail you don't need it and that's really it if you have here the air uh, so you are just um, setting the the hardness or softness by pumping the air and here you have uh, compression which usually I have fully opened and then the rebound which usually I have maybe like three clicks from the fully opened and that's it 
You might think about the Kashima code on the Fox or maybe some, some better anodized uh, surfaces on, on more expensive uh, forks. I will tell you that I haven't had so much um, experience with the lower uh, range forks from Fox, but as for the RockShox, I didn't have any problems really. Most of my trail bikes came with the Revelation. One of the Revelation forks I have uh, has got now like 15,000 kilometers without any servicing. <laughs> yes, that's me and I didn't didn't make that servicing. My mom is riding the back, it's in the, on the e-bike. But um, this is just enough. Easy to maintain, easy to, to service. And this guy wants to go back out. Okay, these are the cats. He'll be back in a minute. So, if you have 120, 130, 150 here millimeters of travel, um, budget RockShox is very, very good fork. And then on the rear, I also have the RockShox damper. Um, you just need to match the damper with the frame if you are buying it separately, especially the used ones. So just remember about the mounting uh, length for the for your shock. Okay, the next one is the drivetrain. Uh, one by by far, uh, I would like to have two by on the cross country bike or marathon bike. One by for trail riding is great because you don't need to have that ideal cadence and you are not trying to be as fast as possible up the hill, you will just use that second gear or the first gear and you're going up the hill. If you're buying a new bike, uh, one of the newest bikes, you will probably have 1x12 drivetrain from SRAM or Shimano. For this drivetrain, my opinion is the SX and the NX doesn't ship quite as good as the newest 12-speed Diori. If you're going for something really expensive, uh, go back for two or three episodes on my channel. XX1 cassette and XX1 derailleur is simply better than the, than the XTR from Shimano. It is better. And also, I would say that um, the chain rings, even on the SX, is more sophisticated than on the Shimano. It, um, it, it leaves more space for the mud between the chain links and, and, those, um, and those teeth. So bear that in mind. If you are buying something older, like quite old with let's say two by something, it is really easy convertible to one by 11, one by 10. And believe me, one by 10 will be enough for trail riding. It really, it, you won't feel much difference between one 10, one 11, even one 12. Of course, on the one 12, you're gonna have 50, 51, 52 now teeth on the lowest gear but if you put let's say 32 or 30 chain ring on your crankset and you have uh, let's say 46 teeth uh, on the rear it will be just fine just enough and much lighter <laughs> uh, on your bike okay so one by yes one by the easier the better it just works so well on on the trail bikes Okay, then we have the, the dropper post, the seat post. Dropper post by far. Uh, if you have the chance to buy the bike with the dropper post, that's beautiful. If you are buying the bike with a standard seat post, um, just bear in mind that 27.2 compatible uh, frames, compatible but with 27.2 diameter seat post, it will be more difficult for you to find, especially some budget uh, dropper post. 30.9, 31.6 is the most uh, popular and very easy now to find and buy even a new one, some budget dropper post. The Travel, this one has 150 millimeters and it's just great. I would say everything, anything over 100 millimeters uh, for trail riding will be great. So yes, the dropper post has the travel just as your suspension has. The more travel it has, the lower your seat will go and it will allow you to go more safe uh, through some rough terrain. When things get really steep, the dropper post uh, is very handy. And when you learn to jump and land, dropper post by far. If your frame doesn't have the internal cable routing, 
you can do some holes in it but of course be cautious that you are weakening the frame by drilling the holes in it so better thing better option is to use the external type extra with the external cables for the dropper poles which you will put just under the top tube and then up there to your seat post so yes there are two two, ty two types of the seat post with the internal cables like you see here this one has the mounting for the cable right here there so it goes inside the frame and the cable goes like this but if you don't have any holes you don't want to drill and make it maybe more vulner vulnerable you just put the outer one okay there's less uh, outer outer uh, housing types for the dropper post nowadays than the internal ones okay so dropper post is a must in my opinion and then the, the, the rotors rear 180 millimeters the more diameter you have the the more power you have but 180 the rear is enough here we also have 180 for cross-country bike that would be 160 sometimes I'm sorry 160 at the rear uh, we have 180 here and 180 at the front for cross-country and trail riding but if if your brakes would be compatible with 203 uh, for those riders who weigh more and go a lot of uh, downhills through, through lots of downhills would be uh, great and of course if you could have the four piston brake at the front at least that would be great this is one piston if you see it's, it's, it would be wider with such, such a two, like two pairs of the um, pads that would be four piston. This is two piston, sorry, um, four piston for the front for some hard riding would be ideal. And then the saddle. Uh, if uh, you're not using a lift, uh, if you are just riding your bike up the hill to the top and then smashing it down, Comfortable saddle is crucial because you'll be sitting on the saddle a lot. Um, on the downhills, you don't really sit on the saddle even, especially if you have a dropper post, it goes down. Uh, but I would say that the one with the cutouts or at least a tunnel shaping right here in the middle, let's look at it. Mm -hmm. That's something that will allow you to sit on the saddle, feel supported instead of uh, kind of like a hang on it so uh, that's important you need to of course you need to test different saddles but remember saddle is important if uh, you feel numbness or pain after some maybe two weeks of trying your your saddle on your bike it means that you have to either replace the saddle or change its position or both and that's pretty much uh, it uh, one more thing about the routers I forgot the cheapest one from Shimano are resin pad only uh, so the the best upgrade for this bike in my opinion would be to buy some really cheap but uh, higher model than this one uh, that would um, accept also the metallic pads or sem semi-metallic at least because if you're riding hard there is lots of temperature there you don't want to have resin parts you want to have semi-metallic or metallic especially for those heavier riders so this is the tutorial the guide for you uh, about trail bikes trail bikes are very versatile you go up with a smile you go down with maybe an even bigger smile uh, and don't spend just a lot of money buying a used one is great and I'm now in search of a used parts for for the cheapest possible trail bike which maybe within a month or two I will assemble this is the new one and the assembly is going to start right now thanks for watching please subscribe stay with me like the video if you like it if you really like it and see you in the next one bye bye I can't see why I didn't call it out I come and go like a round, round, round They don't want the two be going out